Uh, good afternoon, my little Chad aficionados. Um, I am here to uh, show you my rendition of the Shad dart. Uh, you know, as you're going to see once I'm done, there's a million of them out there. Uh, this has just always been a really successful one for me and most importantly, really easy to tie. So uh, it makes it easy to sit down and just start banging a few out over a couple beers and getting ready for the upcoming season. So uh, got limited time here. I'm going to dive right into it. Uh, I'm starting off with uh, some size eight muddler hooks. Uh, obviously, I work at Tyson, so, you know, I get my stuff there. But, you know, you can find whatever hook works for you. Um, it's a little bit shorter. It's a 3X hook. So it's a little bit shorter as far as the shank goes, which I can appreciate uh, since shad are typically known to kind of short strike a little bit. So I like something a little bit smaller. They can get their mouth around. Uh, but the first thing we're obviously going to do is our uh, jam knot. We're going to go ahead and start tying in there. And what I like to do is set my eyes back just a smidgen. Um, you know, I don't obviously don't want them in the middle here, but I like to set it back a little ways from the eye. I think it ultimately makes it a little bit more balanced of a fly. Uh, something else I also like to do is to build up a little bit of a divot kind of in the front here. And I am using a uh, three-aught red thread for this. Something a little heavy duty that's going to put up with a lot of a beating because ultimately we're going to be dragging these across rocks. So we want them to hold together. Um, as far as our lead eyes go, uh, we've recently gotten some new ones in the shop that I've really been a fan of. Uh, they're the double pupil lead eyes. Two colors have really kind of stuck out to me. We've got a uh, red and white kind of color here that I really dig. And then we've also got a black and orange kind of color. See if I can get that in focus for y'all. Both of them are pretty cool colors. I like how they worked out on all the flies I've tied this season. Um, but you can do those in either a medium or a small. I typically do a medium, which is about a 3 16 ounce or 3 16 inch. Let me pull that guy out. I'm going to go ahead and tie this guy in just like you would any other set of eyeballs on your fly. And just kind of keep crossing over, make sure I'm tying that nice and tight. Nothing's worse than finishing your fly. And the first thing that happens is your eyeballs start sliding around on you. So going to give that old whole bunch of good wraps here, just crisscrossing. And then ultimately, I'm going to switch over and kind of start helicoptering underneath these guys like this. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing there. But what that's going to do is take those initial wraps, kind of squeeze them all together, uh, make it a little bit tighter, give it a little wiggle test. It's still moving a little bit, so I'm going to keep on wrapping. Get it nice and tight here. Give a few more wraps underneath. And I'm going to say that we're probably good right about there. Awesome. Cool. Step one complete. Eyes are on. So, uh, you know, if I was going to really do this the way I should, I would hit this with a little bit of uh, zap a gap or, or super glue of some sort. I'm going to go ahead and motor right past that uh, and get this fly tied for you all. So I'm going to go ahead and cover the shank here on my fly uh, or on my hook. Uh, what I really like about doing that is it gives your material something a little bit better to bite onto once you once you tie them in versus just the slick uh, hook where they can kind of slide around and do things like that. So my first material is what we call sparkle hair, uh, just kind of a flashy material here. I typically do these flies uh, pretty much with the same tail every time, whether it's silver, gold, or uh, copper. Somewhere in my mind, I decided that the darker colors would actually function better in, in you know, higher, muddier waters when we see those, particularly down at the Rappahannock is where I kind of caught on to that. Uh, high water days, you know, you see a lot of stained water, and I think the darker colors tend to work a little bit better. But, you know, everyone's caught a fish once, right? So... Uh, basically, I'm going to take a little bit of this stuff here, my crystal, or I'm sorry, my sparkle hair, 
and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of tie it in here. And I use a little bit more than I really need to just because it makes my life a little bit easier when I'm doing these demonstrations. So once I get up to the top, I'm going to cut a lot of this off. So I'm going to give it a few good wraps in here. Get nice and cinched down. And what I do like to do is give it one or two wraps actually underneath that tail. So if you guys can see what I'm doing, I'm actually lifting my tail up and bringing it underneath. I think that kind of helps that material sit out straighter and making a better tail. At this point, I'm going to go ahead, wind up the rest of the way, kind of cinch down some of these materials. And once I get up here, I'm going to give it a nice haircut. So I'm going to take all this excess material that I never needed in the first place and snip it off and kind of clean it up. Get rid of these. And if you notice, what I like to do is try and get these materials over my hook, because if you'll see where my bobbin is, that's under my hook. So chances are less likely of me cutting my thread by accident. So at this point, backing it right back down to the tail here. I still got a little bit of fuzz there, but I can kind of fix that as we move. Um, and I'm going to move on to our next material here, which is going to be Estaz. So I like to use white. That's my kind of my confidence color here. Uh, I'll do it in chartreuse. I'll do it in pink and I'll do it in purple. I've got a few colors I like to do, um, but all of them are great. Shadow eat all of them. So going to go ahead and pull off a little bit of the uh, fuzz here and expose that little piece of thread like you would with any bit of chenille. And I'm going to go ahead and tie this bad boy in. All right, tie him in, work my way right back up to the eyes, cleaned up a little bit extra of that fuzz. And now all I have to do is wrap up to the front here, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and start bringing this around. Now, the important thing about doing these wraps is you always wanna pull your material back as you go. Because what that's gonna do is help it lay a little bit better for you uh, and it'll look a little bit nicer in the long run. Now that may be something that catches the fisherman instead of the fish, but that's the way I want my shad dart to look. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep winding this up all the way up to the eye, right behind the, uh, right behind the uh, barbell here. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off. All right, bring it around, bring it around, bring it under twice. Bring it over two more times. One, two. And I'm going to get rid of this excess chenille here or estaz. There we go. So the last little thing here is going to be ultra chenille. So looking somewhat like this. Uh, it's more like your standard chenille, but it's just much thinner. Uh, it's great for these flies, which really I feel like you do want them to be a little bit sparser, a little bit smaller. So uh, to build this head, we're just going to tie it in right behind the eye. Get it nice and locked down. And then just advance our thread up to the up to the eye there. Now, always, you know, in my classes, I always say always leave a grain of rice. That's going to give you space to tie off once you're done with this. At this point, you can just go ahead and start building up your head. So I like to give it one wrap behind, then I'll crisscross it under, bring it over the top, crisscross, bring it under the eye, bring it back across the eye, crisscross, bring it over here, wrap around, wrap back, and then go ahead and just get a few good wraps in on the nose there. At this point, you can go ahead and tie that material off. One, two, three, two, three, one, two, three, and snip your excess. And of course, I have the world's worst pair of scissors with me today. Cool. All right, so at this point, really, we got two things left. Uh, I'm sure most of you know what that is, but I'm gonna hit it with my whip finisher. 
One, two, three. Pull that up. One more whip finish. One, two, three. Pull that tight. Now I know someone who's watching this right now is probably like, geez, that, that tail looks really ugly right now and way too long. Uh, the reason I kind of do that is because this isn't like uh, when we're using marabou on a, a woolly bugger on the tail there, you know, the, the little tips are really important. That's really the most important part of that feather to give it the action you want. You know, this is a, this is a synthetic, so I'm not super concerned about it because it's basically the same way all the way through. So I'm essentially just going to pull that flat out, give a little snip here. That's my tail. And now you've got yourself a nice little shad dart there. All right. I think everyone can see that. Looks pretty decent. Something I've been thinking about doing is starting to hit them with a little bit of epoxy, maybe cut back on the drag. But I might be overthinking something that ultimately is going to get stuck at the bottom of the river on a rock somewhere. So, again, super easy pattern to tie. You can get them done quick, and, and they work really well. Uh, try swapping out colors on the tail. Uh, copper, gold for darker waters. Uh, the body color can be chartreuse, it can be purple, it can be all sorts of colors. So as long as it's bright and flashy, those guys are probably going to want to eat it. So with that being said, I think that's about it. Any questions? Yeah, Ryan, we have a couple of questions here for you. Uh, so maybe just dive right in. Uh, first question, interesting one here. Would a tube fly version of the dart help with short strikes? Have you ever played around with that? I have not. Uh, I don't fish a lot of tube flies, so that might be something worth considering. Uh, one, one little tactic that I actually had someone suggest to me is actually tying in the, uh, the tail a little bit higher up than where you normally would. Uh, and what that essentially does is sets that hook back a little bit more, but that's something that I haven't actually tested myself yet. So unfortunately, I don't necessarily have an answer for that one, but I would say try it. Yeah, great. Um, then next question quickly, uh, what are favorite color combos here? <laughs> okay, right on. So, <laughs> so yeah, again, um, you know, I'll do chartreuse. I'll do the white. Uh, I've got purple stashed away somewhere. There's also a great pink color, um, you know, Shad aren't picky fish, so I'll basically do those colors with silver tails and those colors with gold tails, thinking that, you know, that might do better in the, in the mm -hmm. muddy water. Other than that, I don't put too much thought in it. Uh, there are definitely, if you come into the shop or something, you'll see a whole bunch of different patterns and different colors. Um, I've even seen like chartreuse and orange. Uh, I, again, I think it's just the louder, the better. Just make it flashy and annoying, and they're probably going to want to eat it. <laughs> Great. Um, and then we, uh, what, uh, would you use this fly on a sink tip, Ryan? Yes, 100%. Um, you know, it does depend on the depth of the water. Uh, for Fletcher's Boathouse, I wouldn't ever fish anything probably less than a 300 or 350, so I can really get down to them. Uh, for the Rappahannock River, which is actually my preferred spot, um, I, you could use just your basic sink tip. Um, but I generally throw about a 250 grain sink line when I'm there. 